So I'm thrilled to be joined now by Dr. Tom Helvick, who is um, not only a world's expert in, uh, in running hospitals and the, all over the <laughs> all world, over the world yeah. all over the world, but it's certainly in robotic uh, module surgery. Tom, thanks for joining me. Well, it's my pleasure. So, so tell me, what's the status of robotic surgery? You know, let's talk about the United States and then potentially worldwide. Well, I think robotic cardiac surgery in the United States has gone through a transformational phase over the last uh, five to six years when we see a growth of robotic cardiac surgical program in a volume. Mm -hmm. However, that growth is focused in the large centers. So okay. fewer centers with a larger experience are doing more and more work. And uh, today we have places uh, like Mayo Clinic and a Cleveland Clinic with extremely high volume, high quality outcomes in uh, robotic cardiac surgery. Is that the way it should be? I believe that the answer to that question is yes because this is a complex technology uh, that is being applied for treatment of a complex disease, right. and it only makes sense to, to have it done in a place that actually can deliver good results. You know, the, the, the rub against robotic surgery is that it's a marketing ploy, and, or it's, you know, the, and that hospitals should get into it because it increases volume and all that. But, but the outcomes in good hands are just as good for, for the right patient? Absolutely. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able we wouldn't be able to do it or to sustain it in our in our current environment in the Cleveland Clinic. We're always focused on the good outcomes, and the patient always comes first. So I'm happy to report that we have done over 1,000 robotic mitral valve repairs over the last uh, six years since the inception of our program, with uh, no hospital mortality. So we have not lost a single patient in during the hospitalization and our repair rate exceeds 99% from myxomatous mitral valve disease. And uh, uh, I just spoke with Dr. Rakesh Suri from Mayo Clinic who has shared similar experiences from his center. Uh, Dr. Doug Murphy in Atlanta and Dr. Chitwood has have demonstrated a similar degree of excellence uh, in their programs as well. Do you see the same thing, is, is it uh, doing the same thing worldwide in European centers, other places, or is this predominantly in the United States right now? Well, what I think that uh, robotic cardiac surgery will follow the trends that other healthcare uh, is following. So to say the, the bigger healthcare is following. Okay. And what that means is that we are most likely in the United States, we'll see, and as we're seeing also all over the world, we're seeing a concentration of excellence in a fewer centers. Okay. So I think what we will see in the U.S. Uh, healthcare environment uh, in a foreseeable future are going to be a very large providers that will be able to generate a volume-based quality and a volume-based excellence for, for their patients. And Tom, at, at the Cleveland Clinic, as an example, not all of your mitral repair surgeons are doing robotic. I mean, in other words, do you select one or two to do it and other, to get your volume up? Uh, it's it's not only to get a volume up, but we have currently uh, uh, have a group of surgeons, of four surgeons who are doing robotic cardiac surgery. So it's not a single surgeon okay. practice, it's okay. a team effort. And we also have a dedicated team of other healthcare professionals who are helping us to be successful. And that is probably a very important message that robotic cardiac surgery is not a solo play. It's not one guy it's, sitting over in the corner. No, 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 no. It's a team effort. Okay. It, it truly is a team effort. Yeah. There, I'm going to come back to that in just a second, but there's been some recent press about with the F FDA looking into complications with robotic surgery. Yeah. Um, what, what's your knowledge about that? Well, to the best of my knowledge, what they're looking is at some adverse, if, uh, adverse outcomes right. in variety of different uh, robotic type of surgeries. And uh, uh, I believe that the, these concerns mirror our concerns. Uh, of, so people who have an experience in robotic uh, surgery in general. Uh, and what I mean by that is we are always emphasizing the need for the concentrated effort uh, of a, and a team effort in delivering a good outcome. Right. So one really cannot absorb a robotic technology in environments that, is, that do not have a sufficient organizational structure and sufficient expertise under their roof to be successful. And I think that a lot of these, as we were talking earlier, I think a lot of these were in non-cardiac surgical arenas and other disciplines. Yeah. Do you, do you, you know, 
We see, I see this all the time because I'm dealing with lots of patients with uh, degenerative disease and they almost invariably ask about robotic repair. Um, are there patients that, you know, and you certainly being an expert in this field, are there patients that would come to you and you'd say, gee, I don't think that's the right way to do this? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I will always tell our patients that our first and foremost goal is to do the right operation for them and to have a good outcome. And our second early goal is to do that operation through the tiniest possible incision. But we will never compromise the quality of right. the work that we do for the sake of a smaller incision. Okay. Having said that, I have never met a patient who wanted to have a large incision if they could get a similar quality work or exactly the same quality work done through the, through the smaller incision. Neither have I. I mean, I mean you know, open it makes yeah. it natural. But I think the, the key thing is that you've got to really instruct them. I tell them I want the best outcome for you. I want Absolutely. not only immediate, but then Absolutely. as long as possible. And Absolutely. Best. Couldn't agree more. So where does where the future of robotic cardiac surgery lie? Well, I believe... Both that, in instrumentation and implementation. I believe that the future is bright. Uh, and the reason why I believe that is if we take a look critically at the development of our specialty, the reason why we're so excited about robotics is because this is the first real advancement in the design of a surgical instrumentation in over a hundred years. That's amazing. Most of the work that we are currently doing, we're doing it with instruments that were designed at the tail end of the 19th century. There is no other specialty that does that other than surgery. What robotics, however, does is with this unique instrument design and improved visualization, it allows us to do a very complex work through a tiny incision. And I believe that the further refinements in robotic technology, which I believe are inevitable, are going to make these systems easier to use, even more precise and less costly. This is a trajectory of every right. successful implementation of technology in medicine. Technology over time becomes less cumbersome, more effective, and less expensive. And you can't, I mean, I think the thing you said, I'm gonna, we're gonna stop in just a second, but the thing you said at the beginning, I think is very important. You can't take a, a mitral valve repair surgeon who does five to 10 cases a year and say, go, go get a robot and you'll be a robotic surgeon. They've got to be experienced surgeons. Absolutely, that? absolutely. They have to be experienced surgeons with a good clinical judgment and with the, obviously the judgment comes with, with, with experience. My last question to you, since, since um, you know, people my age can barely turn on a computer, but, but kids, kids 30 or so, yeah. they're, they're into, you know, video games and everything else. Is it going to be easier for the young surgeon to be trained in this than an old surgeon? Well, it's interesting you say that because most people who have uh, pioneered this field right. are not the young surgeons. No, I know, They're actually I know, older surgeons who have never seen video games while they were growing up. But more importantly, I think the, the advantage of this particular platform is an education of the young surgeons because this is the only platform that we have as surgeons that allows a thorough simulation of the conduct of the surgery and allows us as surgeons... So you to, can simulate the operation. So you can simulate the operation. You can prepare people to be excellent in the operating room without forcing them to gain all the necessary experience by operating on actual patient. You can prepare them in a simulation. Which lab. I think is great. And I can't, I can't help but, but you know, because the rod of the rub against laparoscopic surgery and stuff like that is that the guys don't know how, if they get into trouble, how to get out of trouble. Yeah. So the old, old surgeons say, well, gee, they need to learn classic operative techniques. You're saying that may not be the case here. Well, I, I believe that there's still a, a, a very solid foundation in a good operative techniques is always Absolutely. going to always going to be necessary. And uh, I do not see that in a foreseeable future that we will see the guys who will only know how to do the operation okay. robotically. That's good. <laughs> well, listen, I really not only appreciate the interview time, but I appreciate what you all are doing in right. Cleveland and elsewhere to really push the quality on out. That's really what we need. Absolutely. Well, that's what we're here for. Thanks very much. Uh, good to visit <laughs> with you. Thank you. Thank Same you. here.